go dogs. You guys. <laughs> I am still in shock that Georgia won the national championship on Monday. I can't. It's been 41 years, you guys, <laughs> and we have come so close so many times, especially in the past probably five or six years, we have come so close and it's always just slipped out of our hands and it finally happened. It was very, very emotional for a lot of the Georgia fans just because we've had such you know, it's been such up and down and, oh man, I'm, I still, like, I was shaking when it was happening and just, we kind it just kind of hit us like, I think they just won. <laughs> like, <laughs> we didn't know how to react. We're like, I don't know how this feels. Um, oh man. So go dogs. I just, oh man, this team was special. Um, I know I have some Bama fans out there, so sorry, but not sorry. Like I'm not even a little bit sorry. Like it was our turn and it was so sweet. Mm. Hey guys, it's Sarah. Okay, football aside, today is Bookless Thursday. This is a video series I do with my friend Lindsay over at Lindsay's Little Library. And every Thursday we bring you some sort of list or book topic that we feel like talking about for the week. And this week we decided to give you some books that almost made our top favorites for 2021, but didn't quite make the cut to make it into our favorites video. If you haven't seen my favorites for 2021, I will leave that video link down below. Um, make sure you go check it out. But these are five other books that could have made it. They were very close, but just a few others kind of just edged them out a little bit. But these were ones that I also really, really enjoyed and highly recommend. The first one is The Push by Ashley Audrain. And this was, it's a very hard book to describe because it, has the biggest theme of postpartum depression. Following a mother who is very hesitant to even become a mother in the first place because she does not have a good relationship with her mother and she doesn't have a good relationship with her mother. It's kind of a family trend that's happening where the mothers and daughters are not bonding at all and they have very, very toxic relationships. Because of this, she's afraid <laughs> to have a daughter but she does. She does have a daughter with her husband. And pretty quickly on, she learns that, oh no, the cycle is starting again. I'm not bonding with her. We're not connecting. What am I doing wrong? She's doing these things that I'm starting to question if they're actually problems or am I explaining things away for her? You know, is like what's going on with this child and what am I doing wrong as a mother that she's behaving this way? So she's pretty positive that it's, it's her. <laughs> and then she ends up getting pregnant again and has a son and immediately bonds with him. I mean, like from the get go. And that's what she's always wanted. She's always wanted a child that she will bond with and have a healthy relationship with him. And she finds that in him. Therefore her daughter goes largely ignored, which is never a good thing. Right? So it, it really just follows her and her struggle in motherhood. And I thought it was fantastic. I really, really loved it. And I liked going along with her the whole way and trying to see if what her daughter is doing is really bad or if it's excusable because it's very gray area. So uh, that was the biggest takeaway for me. I really liked it. So that's another one that almost made my top, but not quite. The next one is The Lost Apothecary. This is by Sarah Penner, and I really love this book too. This is a historical fiction, and it does have a dual timeline. So we are following a current timeline where we follow a woman in Caroline, and she is on a trip to kind of escape her <laughs> issues that she's having in real life. And she ends up going mudlarking in London. And that is something where you will literally go as a group and you will comb the beach and just see what kind of treasures will come up. And she ends up fighting a bottle and she works with a librarian to try to track down the origins of this bottle because it looks very unique and it has a very unique symbol on it. And so she's trying to kind of figure out where this bottle came from and see what the history of it is. 
you see the history of what the bottle is in our past timeline where we are following a woman who has had some very unfortunate encounters with men in her life and she ends up making it her life mission to help other women who are in similar situations and need to take care of the men that are in their lives that are holding them down, that are abusing them, that are making their lives very dangerous to even be living in and putting them in very bad situations. And they do that by poisoning them. And she has a very specific set of skills where um, she can lace things with poison and it's undetectable. And so you see her kind of create this type of business. You see how the clientele comes in and finds her. Um, so you, you go back and forth between these two things. And I really, really loved it. I actually really enjoyed the past timeline more than the current one. The current one was interesting still. And it did give me some feelings for sure. But I liked the past timeline a little bit better. And um, yeah, I thought it was fantastic. The next one is The People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I have absolutely fallen in love with Emily Henry as an author, and she has another one coming out this summer that I'm super excited for. And her contemporary romances are just speaking to me, and they're so much fun, and I really have been enjoying them. And this one was no exception. This follows Friends, who have made it a tradition where every summer they will take a vacation together. And they do this based upon the girl's work. She is a travel blogger or a travel writer, if you will. So her um, employer will send her on this vacation and it's a full paid vacation for two. So she takes her best friend with her and they have been traveling around to all these different places and it's become a big tradition for them. And one summer on one of these trips, something happens between them and it completely ruins their friendship, completely ruins it. And they are barely even talking now. So a few years down the line, she is really having a hard time in her life and trying to remember when the last time she was really happy was. And the last time she was really happy was when she was on vacation with him. And so she reaches out to him and says, can we please try to fix this? Let's go on one vacation together and see if we can make it work. And just, you know, I need you in my life type thing. And so he agrees to go. What I really liked about this book was the formatting of it. So you're getting mostly, you know, a lot of the current timeline, but then you're going to go back and see the former trips that they were on. And it kind of like leads up to what happened on that faithful trip that made them barely on speaking terms anymore. So it's, you know, you're mostly in the current timeline, but then you're going to go back and you're like, oh, this trip and then this trip and then this trip. And it was really cool to see that progression. I thought that was really cool. So that one is a definite recommend for me. And yeah, I loved it. And the next one is All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Bryn Greenwood. This one is, um, it's kind of a hard book to defend, <laughs> to be honest with you, because of the subject matter. Uh, this book follows a romantic relationship between a grown man and a young, young teen. And it's really hard because these two meet when she is eight years old and he's in his twenties and you see their progression in their bond that they form very early on. And the reason they form this bond is because he really started looking after her almost like a father figure and um, someone to protect her because she was part of a very, very toxic family and very, very toxic situation that she was in. And so he felt definitely like he needed to protect her and make sure that she was safe. And so that's how they're bond forms and you see their relationship as it progresses over time. And even though, <laughs> you know, they had been friends for a very, very long time, she, you know, like when you start getting into the later timeline, she's still only 14. And so she's still a child and it's really, it it's hard guys. It was a very, very hard book to read and a hard book to wrap your understanding and your feelings around. And like, I definitely felt like a love hate for it. Like I loved the book. I thought it was written so well. I thought it handled it, that whole situation really well as, as well. Um, but at the same time, I hated it because it's wrong and it's not okay. And the book does not portray it as okay either. Um, 
And but at the same time, you're understanding it and you get it, even though it's wrong. (laughs) And it's just it's so hard to kind of say that I loved this book, but I did. And I think it's going to give it's it's very polarizing. You know, I know that there are people who 100 percent won't even touch this book, which I completely understand. And then there are people who will pick it up and absolutely love it. Um, it's just, it's one of those hard ones though. Like, you know, it's, it's just, it's just a book that's hard to love, but I do. And, um, yeah, so I, it's, and I don't recommend it for everybody either. You have to be okay knowing what you're going into for sure. And, um, yeah, so, but I loved it. And the last one that almost made my top favorites was Every Last Secret by A.R. Tori. And this one was a complete surprise. I picked it up on my Kindle. I had had it from NetGalley for a very long time. This was an author I have never read from before, and I really want to read her work. And this one blew me away. I had no idea what it was about going in. I literally had zero idea. I went into it completely blind. I was like, oh, I'll just pick this up. And I could not put it down. I think I read this book in like two days. It was so juicy and just, yeah, we're following this couple who are very rich. They are very well-to-do. The husband works in some sort of medical field and he has created uh, something about, like something that's very revolutionary in the medical era. I can't remember exactly what it was, Um, but it made him a lot of money, a whole lot of money. And... So they are living in this beautiful house and, you know, they're just, they're very, very privileged, right? And he ends up hiring a consultant to come into his firm and cut and just to kind of help his employees stay motivated and do all these things. And it's a woman and she ends up, her and her husband move into the house next door to them. And you see this woman completely just try to infiltrate their lives and want to basically steal this woman's husband from her. And I really like this book because you get perspectives from both of the wives. So you're getting both of the women's perspectives. And so you're seeing what's really happening behind the scenes of things as they're happening, which I thought was really interesting. So you're seeing this side of this woman, and then you're seeing this side of this woman. But of course, together, they're presenting something different. And so you're kind of really seeing what's going on the whole time. So I really liked that. And it was just juicy, you guys. Like, It was just full of, uh uh-uh, no, she didn't. And like, are you serious right now? And like, just, I loved it. (laughs) I thought it was a great time. (laughs) Um, There are a little bit of content warnings in here. So definitely like there's, you know, there's some infidelity that's happening and all that stuff. Um, There's also um, talk about miscarriages in here. That's kind of a big thing. So if that's something you're sensitive to, I would be wary going into this one of that. But oh man, you guys, like... It was so good. I loved it. And I cannot wait to read more from this author for sure. Um, That's something that's going to need to be happening very soon, but I loved it. Okay, guys, those are five books that almost made my favorites for 2021. Just a couple of them just edged them out just a little bit, but definitely high recommends for me. Absolutely love them. So make sure you go check out Lindsay's video today and see which books almost made her top as well. I will leave her channel link down below. So make sure you go check her out and let me know down below if you guys have read any of these books um, and what were some of your favorite books of the year. I would love to know that. And we will talk to you guys again soon. Hope you have a great day. Bye.